this is the key to quiz two. Okay. Uh, so a drawing is a scale of a quarter inch equals three feet. Determine the value of each miss. Determine the value of each missing value. Okay. So we have to set up a proportion to do these. It's always going to be this on one side. Uh, one quarter over three. And since they're giving us the scale length, that's what this thing is. That goes on the top, one and one eighth. And this is what we need to find out. So you would go that times that divided by that. So uh, let me just make sure I'm in the right mode. We want to be in. This mode here. I want to do fractions. All right. <clears throat> so I want to do one and one eighth. That gets multiplied by three and then divided by one, one half. Or I'm sorry, one quarter. It's Thirteen and a half feet. And really we should be consistent with what they've done down there. So a half a foot is six inches. That's actually better. Okay. Um, now all we would do is replace the one and one eighth with seven sixteenths. So we could just go up here, grab that, and just change the first thing to be 7 sixteenths. Delete that. Otherwise everything would be the same. So it's 5 and a quarter, which is 5 feet. Three inches. Okay. <clears throat> now, though, these ones here were given uh, the bottom number. So we might want to put six and three quarters feet there. Right? That's what that would be. And then we would go like that. So. different than what we were doing before. Start with the six and three quarters. Multiply that by a quarter. Then divide that by three. That's nine sixteenths. Then we would just grab that and um, replace the six and a quarter with sixteen and one sixteenth of an inch. Hmm. That's a little bit more complicated. Okay, let's clear that out then. <coughs> so 16 feet, then we are adding an inch. All right. That one and one sixteenth, one and one sixteenth, that's how many inches there are. That's that many feet, right? You would divide it by 12 to convert inches to feet. So that get added to the 16 feet. That's the number then, that's this number. It gets hit with the quarter and, and then divided by three.
Wow. Uh... I think that is correct. Uh, I guess I'll just write that. I mean, at this at this point, you'd probably want to do a decimal approximation of that. You just add 3.0 to it, it knows to make it a decimal. No. All right, I'm rounding that thing off because that's a really awkward answer to use. Those should be in proportion at the same one quarter divided by three. This fraction over here is one twelfth, right? If you do one quarter divided by three, it's the same as one twelfth. So it should be the case that if we divide this crazy thing we got up here. We divide that by 16 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 16th over 12. It's in the ratio. So that's that's what it is. I'm gonna just just in case somebody actually does get that crazy thing, I'm gonna say one and seven hundred and eighty-five twenty-three oh fourths inches, which is approximately one point three four inches. It's a little bit it's basically one and a third. So Okay, good enough. So here we're filling in these <coughs> blanks here. For problem A, we're given gear speed A. We need to find gear speed B. We know it's inversely proportional to their teeth ratio. So uh, for, for A, let's do the work here. We're comparing A to B, so 80 teeth to 30 teeth. Uh, gear A is going to move slower than gear B. Gear, a is, gear B will be moving faster. So its speed should be on the top, which is the thing we don't know, which is X. But we do know the speed of gear A. So X will be uh, 120 times 80 over 30. So 320. These are the same because they're coaxial or whatever you would say. Uh, now gear D should be even faster than that. <clears throat> so we can ratio 50 to 20. We want the slower speed associated with the smaller number of teeth. This is going to be Z here. All right, so then Z would be 320 times 50 over 20. Okay. 
Okay. Now. Now here, we're, the unknown is <coughs> the number of teeth of gear B. Okay. That should be smaller than the number of teeth on gear A. So... What we would do is we would take this proportion, the proportion of the gear speeds, set that equal to the ratio of the teeth, and the 60 is going to be the bigger number. So that should go here. So we can get that x by going 60 times 100, 60 times 100 over 300. So there's 20 there. Now, so we know that this speed here is going to be the same because they're axially locked. Uh, so now the 300 over 450 is the same. This is the bigger number. This is obviously going to be 30, right? This is a factor of 10 more. Okay. <clears throat> um, so we have to start from this end now and work that way. So 60 to 36. Is a ratio teeth. This is the bigger speed always. So that should go on the top. So Z is 280 times 36. Divided by 60. 168. That's the Z here. That is what that speed is. So that's the same as that speed. Now we can use that ratio to get this. So that was all A, this was all for B. That was, we're doing C right now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go 144 over 168. That's got to be the same. That's the smaller. This number here is smaller than that number. So the 24 goes up here. And the X goes on the bottom. So it's 24 times 168. Divided by 144. Lastly, okay, 175 is for sure here. Now I can get this Y because I have that ratio. 55 to 25 is the same. Uh, this is the bigger number, so that goes on the top. So that allows us to find Y. Just round answers to one decimal place where necessary. Okay, so 79.5. We're getting a fractional number of teeth, which is a little bit problematic. I don't like that. Just going to make sure everything is hunky dory here. Fifty-five to twenty-five compares these two. 
So it has to be the 175 is going to be the bigger number. So it goes with the 55. So that's it. It's got what we really found was this number here, 79.5. Okay, uh, and then we can use that ratio over there, 175 over 350. That's got to be the same for this ratio, with this one as the smaller number. So that would be on the top. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. We should get an even number of teeth. It's all right if we have fractional RPMs. And I'm happy with that. All right, that was D. Okay. Let's separate all that off. What percent of 24 is 16, or is 18? Um, so what do you got to multiply 24 by to get 18 is how I read that. So I read that as uh, x times 24 equals 18. So x would be 18 over 24, which is 0.75 which is 75%. So I'm going to put that work up in the blank there. So the percent rate of 24 is 18. That tells me that um, x is 18 over 24, which equals 75%. What is 30% of 50? Well, that's a direct calculation. And convert it to a decimal and multiply by 50. 15. This is the same process. That's 1.238 times 12.6. So I'm getting 15.5988. Okay, 73 is 82% of what number? So 80, 0 0.82 of what number is 73? So you divide by 0.82. Just say that's approximately 89. Doesn't say what to round to, so whatever. What percent of 10 and a half is 2? What percent of 10 and a half, I'm just going to do it like that, is 2? So we would divide 2 by 10.5. And then that's 19.05%. Okay. What percent of 28? So what percent of 228 is 256? So you would divide by 228. So it's 112.28%. Uh, okay. 5103 is 
percent, so I'm going to write that as a decimal, of what number? X is 51.03 divided by 0.88. Uh, it looks like it's basically 50, 58. I think that's what they're trying to get at there. 36.5 is blank percent of that. So you would divide by this, right? This is what's being multiplied by the unknown percent. So 36.5 divided by 27.6. It's 132. Hundred thirty two point two five. You just multiply it. Okay, that so that's two two plus a quarter. That's how much percent it is. So you, if it's a percent you would divide by a hundred. That's what the decimal equivalent of that is. Then you multiply it by one fifty. Three point three seven five. Right, it's a little more than two percent of it, right? 2% of it would be 30. So, okay. That page looks done. We got some wordy, wordy problems here. The engine loses 4.2 horsepower through friction. The power loss is 6% of the total rated horsepower. So 6% of some unknown. So you would divide by 6% to get the unknown by itself. So 4.2 divided by 0 0.06. 70 horsepower. Okay. A small manufacturing plant employs under 30 persons. On a certain days, 60 employees are absent. What percentage of the total number of employees is absent. So it's 16 over 30. 16 over 130. And, okay, round answer to the nearest whole percent. 12 percent. That's how I would do that. This year's earnings of a company are 140 percent of last year's earnings. I'll write, just so you can see it on the key, I'll write the work I did. This was 4.2 divided by 0 0.06. That's how I got that. Here I just went 16 over 130 and rounded. This year's earnings of a company are 140% of last year's earnings. The company earned this much this year. How much did it earn last year? So this equals 1.4 times the unknowns. Divide this by 1.4. So it would be 910000 divided by 1.4. 650,000. Okay. In three hours, 73.5 feet of railing are fabricated. This is 20% of a total order. How many feet of it order ordered? So 0.28 times unknowns, you divide by 0.28. So it looks like it's 262.5 feet. How many pounds of manganese bronze can be made with 955 pounds of copper if the manganese, the manganese bronze to contain 58% copper by weight? Gotta read that one again. 
how many pounds of manganese bronze can be made with this many pounds of copper? Okay. So 58% of the pound total poundage is the copper. That's how I read that. So 0 0.58 of the total weight, right? is made up of 955 pounds of copper. So you would divide the 955 by that. Round answers to the nearest whole pound. So 1647 pounds. Nine hundred fifty five should be roughly point five eight of that. Yeah. Okay. So a couple more here. A manufacturer's production this week is thirty six twenty pieces. This is thirteen and a half percent greater than last week's production. Find last week's production round answers to the nearest whole piece. Okay. So another way of seeing that is that the 3620 is 113.5% 100, of the previous one. That's how I read that. So I'm saying, so you, so you would do the 3620 divided by one point one three five. That's a hundred and thirteen point five percent. If it's thirteen percent greater than last week's, then it's a hundred and thirteen per and a half percent of last week's. I think. It's the best idea. Round answers to the nearest whole piece. So three, one, eight, nine. So if you subtracted those thirty six twenty minus oops, minus thirty one eighty nine. That should be thirteen and a half percent of the thirty one eighty nine. Yeah. Okay. Two machines are used to produce the same product. One machine has the has a capability of producing seven hundred and fifty pieces per eight hour shift. It is operating at eighty percent of its capacity. The second machine has a capability of producing 900 pieces per 8 hour shift. It's operating at 75% of its capacity. Find the total number of pieces produced per hour with both machines operating.
I don't get the point of the of saying that they they run at a certain percentage of their capability. The problem doesn't say that they're working at maximum capability. I assume that they're going to work at the same rate as they were before. So what percent of their capability it is is irrelevant. That's how I'm reading that. All you have to do, I think, to answer this is figure out how many this thing can do in one hour. Figure out how many this can do in one hour and add them. I'm going to come up with two answers and I'm going to accept either answer because I'll incorporate those weird capacities and then assume that it runs at full capacity. In other words, one works 20% more, the other works 25% more. So I'm going to do a calculation with and without doing that. So one way to do it would be 750 over 8 plus 900 over 8. It says round to the nearest whole piece, so 206. Now, if we assume that they work at full capacity, full capability, then this rate here would be too small. We need to increase that sucker by 20%. So we would need to multiply that by 2. So it would be that number then we would increase it by 20 percent this one over here we would increase by 25 percent so we're going to get a different number here should be bigger than what we got before 253. I would accept either answer because it's not clear to me what they want. Okay, that's the number that they could produce if they maxed the capability of both machines out. That's how many they can make in an hour. This is if they kept using the same capabilities as before. Anyway, moving along. Allowing for scrap, a firm produces eight, 1890 pieces. The number produces 8% more than the number of pieces required for the order. How many pieces does the order call for? So it's 1.08 times the number of pieces. So you divide by 1.08. This number is 108% of what it should be. A manufacturing company receives 122 G's upon completion of a job. Total expenses for the job is that. What percent of the job is profit? So profit was the difference. They made, they made that much profit. Uh, what percent of the, the so then to get the percent you would divide by the revenue I guess I don't know That's the only thing that makes sense to me so let's convert to a percent nine and a half 
That's a pretty good return on investment. I'd take that any day. of the job I, I don't know I don't know if they mean of the costs or of the revenue I assume of the revenue right? you would think of the profit making up part of the revenue so that's how I'm going to interpret that okay um, now this last part says a manufacturing cost consists of labor costs material costs and overhead Refer to the following table. What percent of the total manufacturing cost for each, for each of jobs one, two, and three is each manufacturing cost? So they want percentages. So you add these up. That's the total cost. Then divide each of these by that total. So I'm going to create a new total column here. for job one. The total is 4,005. For this other one, the total cost is 2870. And 2490. 1870, 1600, 59, So to get these, we would divide each of these numbers by these totals. So as a percent, that is 47.19%. That's for labor on job one. Materials is 80, 875 over that. That's 21.85. The overhead is 30.96. Those should add up to 100 if we did it right. Similar process for the rest of these. So 930 over 2870. Labor is 3240. Materials 1060. Thirty six ninety three. This should be like 32 again. Okay, 30. 30, 66. Forty-one seventy-eight. Six eighty five. Right, I'm just going to check to see if these work out. Basically, okay, it's rounding problems there. Did I round properly on this last three? $30.98. 
3690, 3290, 3290, 3290, 3290, 3290, 3138, 2685, another rounding here, okay, okay. Uh, that is it I think.